Okay. Hey guys, Coach Kirk Shinta here, um, and I help give um, entrepreneurs uh, tips, strategies to grow their business. I'm also the founder of Boss Mentorship, Boss Empire, and the Boss Mentorship Academy. All right. So today we have here uh, Tanya Smith. Did I say the last name right? You got it. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, what I asked Tanya to do is come on here, and, and, and this is her time, her platform, her window. Um, what I know is that there's um, a, a space that entrepreneurs neglect in their business. And it's typically when it comes to um, either bookkeeping or um, just tracking and things like that. And I just invited her to just share whatever nuggets she can share um, about, you know, keep keeping track of the money side of making money online. And I'm gonna invite her to do that and share a little bit. Actually, why don't you start by introducing yourself and tell us about your business? Okay. Uh, as she said, my name is Tanya Smith. I reside in Ridgeland, Mississippi. Uh, I have a bookkeeping and tax business here. And I'm also one of Shen's students when it comes to affiliate marketing. Um, and I basically work with individuals and small business owners uh, who are sole proprietors and LLCs. Uh, kind of some of the things that I've noticed uh, since the Tax Cuts and Job Act took effect, keeping records has become vital, not just for business owners, but for individuals as well. Uh, and that's something that is lacking uh, with all businesses just about um the biggest thing is business owners not taking full advantage of every deduction that they can hmm. and that's because they haven't been educated on how to do that and i there are some tax preparers they just do your taxes and they're done um but Really, the thing we should be doing as tax preparers is educate our clients, especially if they're small business owners, how to take advantage of every opportunity there is to save money so you can avoid a big tax bill. And that's one of the things I noticed with some of my clients. They aren't taking full advantage. And a couple of them, they're new under me, so I've been trying to educate them moving forward before this year is out some things they need to go back and start tracking mm -hmm. uh i recommend apps to my clients to help them do all of this um the top things to help you avoid uh pretty much having a big tax bill of uh, something i see like myself when i first started out I did brick and mortar, but it wasn't feasible for me because a lot of my services, as far as bookkeeping um, and even taxes now, you can virtually do them just by uploading them through a secure portal. And so people like that because you have people who work eight to five, nine to five, and they don't have time to go out try to see a uh, tax preparer, a bookkeeper, whatever. And a lot of that we can do online now because we have secure portals, uh, those who have uh, virtual offices and clients can transmit that information securely to you when you need something. Even with signing tax returns now, I have where I can just shoot you a link and you can sign it and it's gonna notify me once you sign it so we can get it filed. That's if we're not filing a paper return. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the biggest things I see that uh, small business owners aren't doing is claiming home office space. Uh, I ask people, where's your business? Okay, oh, I work out my house. Okay, about how many square feet of your house do you use for your business? Uh, I don't know. Okay. So how big is the area? And I try to help them as the old, as they say, you know, estimate rather how much space in their home they're actually using so we can claim that on the taxes. And that's the, one of the biggest deductions you can have is a um, home office deduction. Because if you're working out of your home, 
then whatever your square footage of your house that you're using, you can deduct that on your taxes. And uh, a lot of people uh, overlook that. I don't care if you're working for your, from your bed, that space is your work area. So you claim that and get that deduction. Um, another thing um, that I have noticed that a lot of people are not doing is utilizing their car for business use especially if you're someone who's traveling to clients or you're const you're constantly going to meetings you need to track that mileage whenever you're going out on business uh just like with your home office you can use your car for business use all you have to do based on when you started your business that's the effective date you started using your personal vehicle for business. And like I said, that brings in depreciation and so forth, even with the equipment that you purchase. But especially with your car, uh, you get a nice little deduction uh, when you use your car for business. And like I said, the biggest thing is getting people to track their mileage and they'll track fuel costs because normally they're using a credit card or a debit card. They'll give me their statements so I can get how much. But if you have not been using the tracking the vehicle itself for business purposes, giving me your mileage doesn't mean a hill of beans because I got to know uh, when you first put the car into use, uh, the value of the car, all of this. And how many miles you drove versus personal miles, business miles versus personal miles. And um, a lot of people aren't tracking that. And that's something I, I would love to see all people, not just business owners, but individuals it track. Because a lot of individuals don't understand, and this still applies to you if you're a sole proprietor or LLC. You can track your mileage when you're going to the doctor. If you are doing volunteer work for a charity, you can deduct that mileage. And like I said, going to the doctor, you may have to drive 45 minutes to the doctor one way and back. So guess what? Track it. Mm -hmm. uh, the best app I recommend for that is either Hurdler or Mile IQ. I use Mile, Mile IQ. IQ is a little bit more in depth than Hurdler because you can actually track personal mileage business mileage and medical mileage in mile IQ and I think it's $60 a year which is like $5 a month if you want to get it because if you use the free version you can only track 40 drives per month you want to track every drive that you do and the way you keep up with it late at night you sitting in bed just go through it and swipe left or right whether it was for personal or business and that the way at the end of the year you can pull down an Excel file of all of that data and give it to your tax preparer. And it's going to define how many miles you drove for business, how many miles was personal, and how many were medical. And it gives the total mileage for that entire year. So that's the biggest thing I recommend is that people use a mileage app uh, when they are using their car for business and even personal use. But uh, the other thing is, uh, as far as tracking your finances, which is something I don't know what it's going to take to get people to understand, paper is good. But having an app to do all of that for you takes the pressure off you at tax time mm -hmm. of having to dig through boxes and drawers to find different receipts or the receipts have faded. If it's faded, guess what? I can't use it because I can't read it. Right. So the best thing to do is get you an app. Uh, and I recommend, and it's on, and I, I just like it because I use QuickBooks and I'm a pro advisor for QuickBooks. So my recommendation is if you're self employed, the self employed app, uh, I think it's like $9.99 a month. They had a special not too long ago where it was $5 a month. In that is going to track your bank accounts. It'll take, you can even capture your receipts in this particular app. 
And uh, that way, you don't have to worry about receipts that have been faded, you losing possibly a deduction that you need. Because if you go ahead and capture the receipts as soon as you make your purchase or whatever, you just take the, open up the app, snap the picture, and you're done. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's one of the apps I definitely recommend for people trying to track their finances. And that way, whoever is going to help you do your taxes, you can give them access to it through the app so they can go in and kind of clean it up and classify everything in terms of expenses and income for you. And that way, all they have to do is download it to do your taxes. And it just makes life easier for you and for the individual who's going to uh, do your taxes. Other thing I see people uh, not doing enough of is claiming their expenses when it comes to advertising and marketing. <laughs> a lot of people I see, they do little ads on Facebook. You can claim that. That's a part of your advertising and marketing. Um, even if you do a job listing on Craigslist, claim it. That's a part of your marketing. Um, and like I said, that's just something a lot of people aren't aware that they can do. Because like I said, they hadn't been educated, but in it, even your website, uh, if you're paying a monthly fee for a funnel, you can claim that. Anything you do that's going to promote your business, whether it be in print or electronically, you claim it. Claim your software that you use for your business. But like I said, website fees that you might pay on a monthly basis. If you're doing uh, funnels for leads, you can claim that, especially if you're paying a monthly fee for it. If you are buying traffic, that's a part of advertising. So claim those expenses. And the more expenses you have, that's better for you in terms of cutting back on your tax bill. Right. Um, <laughs> but that's one of the top three things. And another one is... Uh, a lot of people who are business owners who have kids, they will know, well, I pay X number of dollars to daycare. What about after school care? Because sometimes you may, your child may not, especially if they're in school or daycare, they may not go to the same place for aftercare. So that's another fee. A lot of people forget to claim after school care. They'll claim daycare, so forth. And they'll like individuals who have kids in private school. Well, can I claim tuition? No. Can I claim tuition on K through 12 uh, private schools? Only if the kids are in college would you be able to uh, claim that deduction. But you cannot claim tuition for children who are K through 12 if they're going to a private school. Uh, and the other thing is. Um, Retirement contributions. A lot of self-employed individuals aren't putting anything aside for retirement, and a lot of them are not setting aside money uh, for self-employment tax. And that's something I would love to see changed uh, because that's what's killing a lot of uh, self-employed individuals when it comes to tax time. Instead of getting that tax break, um, I see a lot of them paying back. And the IRS, especially when you're starting up, you can get away with having a loss at least the first three to five years because you're just getting your business started. But after that, they want to see a profit. So you got to find, as well as, like I said, you got to find a way to put some money aside. And, the, and, the, and what I tell people with that is I find out they aren't charging enough for their services. And you have to build all of that in when you decide, okay, well, how much am I going to charge for this or that? You need to look at uh, how much you want to make set aside for retirement. And that helps you determine how much you're going to charge in terms of fees. But uh, definitely start setting something aside for retirement. It can be small starting out. Uh, like mutual funds or what have you, but at least start setting something aside uh, for retirement purposes. Another big thing I see that people don't uh, claim is travel. Um, a lot of people 
I'm going to use this is a perfect situation. Have a traveling nurse. And she is out of state. What is it? Two months. Then she's back here for two months. And I have been asking for travel in terms of airline, hotel, or what have you. If she has to rent a car when she's out of state to go back and forth to work. And I have yet to get it. And I've been asking for this since February. Mm. The deadline to file her ex tax ex for tax extension is October 15th. And uh, it's just some people honestly don't know that they can do these things. And she's like, well, I, I said, if you can find me a credit card statement with your airline tickets on it, if you would, it, whatever you have to pay for when you're traveling out of town for work, I need it. But hopefully she'll get it to me before the tax deadline. But um, just like your vehicle expenses, your traveling for the sole purpose of work is deductible. So if you have to fly to a conference, pay registration fees for a conference, hotel expenses, food expenses, and this is another thing I have to get people to understand. Your food expenses, you should budget those when you travel based on the federal per diem. And uh, you can go out on the government's website for uh, federal per diems. It tells you how much Whatever state or city you're traveling to, it gives you the per diem per day, as well as meals and incidentals uh, that you can budget for while you're gone. So if you're going to travel to, say I travel from Mississippi to Atlanta, well, the meal per diem in certain parts of Mississippi is $40 a day, but could be double that in Atlanta. Whereas breakfast may be $12 here uh, per diem for uh, breakfast in Mississippi. It might be $20 a day in Atlanta. So that's how you budget for your travel. You don't just say, oh, I'm going to take 300 No, you go out there, find out what the per diems are for your hotel, your meals, meals as well as incidentals. And, uh, and it tells you how much you plan a day. And like I said, with your mileage for business right now, the per diem for travel is 0.585 cents a mile. Um, so when you're traveling for business, track that mileage because at the end of the year, it's going to make a difference uh, in terms of giving you your tax breaks. Uh, but also in, when you're traveling, if you're tipping, track your tips. Uh, for even if it's for the bed turned down, track all of that uh, because you got to keep detailed records when you have a business, especially with the tax cut and jo uh, jobs act now. Uh, because one of the things we feel, I'm a member of National Association of Tax Professionals, and one of the things we cracked a joke about at our conference last year was basically we're doing the IRS job for them now because. <laughs> We got to get, when I say every single little piece of paper, that was their job. But now we got to do it because in the event you're audited, we have to show, well, how did, well, this is what they gave me, blah, blah, blah. That's why I tell them, you don't give it to me. I'm not, I'm not just going to take your word. I need some paper to verify everything you just told me. So, you know, I tell people, keep everything because, like I said, this the way it's working now, if they decide to audit you, then definitely you're going to have to produce some paperwork. And ultimately, yes, I may have done your taxes, but at the end of the day, when they get through, they're going to look at you because you're the individual who provides the information to your tax preparer. Now, uh, that's why I advise people keep as much paper in relation to your business as you can. Um, I know it gets to be a little hectic sometimes, but this day and age, we got to keep track of what we're spending, what's coming in and so forth. Another thing a lot of people don't claim is legal and professional fees. Uh, if you have to hire an attorney to do a business formation, 
So if you go through something like legal zoom or um, any other online services that can help you do your LLC or what have you, those fees are deductible as well. And some people are like, well, I did. Okay. I need to go online and print out your receipt or find an email with the total and send me that. Uh, the other thing in terms of professional fees, if I prepare your taxes, that amount that I charge you for your taxes is deductible from year to year. A lot of people be like, I don't even know how much I paid. I'm like, okay, you got bank statement or something that shows who you pay, go back, look for it, or call them and tell them to send you a receipt. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, you can claim your tax preparation fees. For instance, if I did your bookkeeping for you quarterly, whether it's monthly, whatever, you can claim those fees. Um, but like I said, a lot of people don't track that, but like I said, it's important that as a business owner, you keep copies of everything because like I said a lot of people miss deductions for that simple reason they don't know they can claim these items and uh, it's just best to keep it let your account or bookkeeper what have you uh, who's going to do your taxes review it and determine if it's something uh, that can be used in terms of a deduction um, in terms back to self-employment taxes um, there is a calculator online, and if you Google self-employment calculator, it should pop up. I can't think of it off the top of my head. That will give you an idea that if you're making X number of dollars a year, it's going to tell you how much you should be paying in self-employment taxes. And even if you don't make that much say that particular month to cover that, put something aside. So when it comes time at the end of the year to pay the taxes, guess what? You have already put at least half of that aside, if any, uh, to cover what you would have to pay to the IRS. So it's definitely beneficial for people to, if you don't want to do it, then ask your accountant or your bookkeeper or your tax preparer to uh, let you know how much do I need to put aside because of course they'll have your financial records how much I need to put aside each month for self-employment taxes and like I said that calculator does wonders I did it for a guy who just started a business in January and he's ended up having to pay an arm and a leg because he hadn't been putting anything aside uh, for self-employment taxes um, like I said that helps you get a good idea okay i need to put back oh three hundred dollars a month so as long as you put back at least half of it every month that's gonna cut back on what you have to come up with out of pocket to pay and i advise people that if they do that be less headache and heartache when you come to dealing with the rs mm -hmm. but uh, definitely uh I encourage people who are self-employed and LLCs who are not doing it to definitely get you an app that's going to track your mileage and help you uh, track the cost of whatever maintenance you have to do on your car is, you know, to keep it on the road for business purposes, especially get you an app that's going to help you track your finances. That's going to, um, back on you digging for a lot of stuff at the end of the year because if you start tracking it from day one and just taking you an hour or two at night and or on your lunch break or whatever and just going through the app and like I say it's a matter of swiping left or right and um it's gonna it's just gonna help you stay organized be less frustrated come tax time so uh those are the top things that I noticed that uh would help small business owners especially the sole proprietors and llc's because they're so busy focusing on business they forget about the financial aspect mm -hmm. and i tell them well how do you know if you are making a profit if you aren't well i you, know, you can't go just by your bank balance you need to because you need to know how much in expenses and where what expenses where you might need to cut back 
in order to help you uh, bring in a little bit more money. But um, those are the top things that I noticed that they need to do. But definitely I encourage uh, business owners to get an app for their finances as well as uh, tracking their mileage. Awesome. This was such great value, Tanya. <laughs> this was, I feel like this is going to help so many entrepreneurs. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, because your screen froze. I, well, I see uh -oh. you. It looked like you're frozen, but anyway. Uh-oh, I might be. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Can you see me now? Um, I you're, think you're, I am frozen looking at it. Yeah, but it's but okay. I, can hear I hear you, you okay. <laughs> so um, my question for you is, how can people get in contact with you? Because, uh, you know, I know Tanya does amazing work. She's excellent. She's well knowledgeable about bookkeeping services for entrepreneurs who they're ready to get their business finances together, snatched and in place. How do they get in contact with you? Um, they can get in contact with me uh, via social media uh, on Facebook. I am Smith Tax and Bookkeeping uh, and at smithtax.prep. Uh, in order to find me or you can give me a call uh, 601-852-3260 and with that uh, you can also text me on that number. Um, can you repeat that number one more time? You broke up a little bit. Oh, okay. That number where I can be reached is 601-852-3960 and that is directly to uh my business and like i said if i'm not available to talk you can feel free to text me as well on that number uh you can email me at info at smithtaxprep.com and um that will come straight to me as well and i'll answer any questions you may have uh in terms of my website it's smithtaxprep.com but i'm in the process of updating some stuff. I'm trying to make it more educational mm -hmm. and give uh, more things that clients can use to help them in cutting their tax bills. So um, definitely keep an eye out on social media, on Facebook at Smith Tax Prep, same on Twitter, um, and same on Instagram. So uh, definitely I post tips, um, try to do them at least weekly. Mm -hmm. And being this is basically, you may as well say September, I'm going to try to do tax tips at least two to three times a week on social media um, to kind of give people an idea of what they can deduct and what they cannot deduct in terms of uh, their taxes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. No problem. Um, I'm excited for you guys who are watching this. You know, um, we're doing this early enough that it's, it's, it's time to get your, your business finances in place, or at least you can take some of these nuggets and start putting them in place now so that April, you're not, you know, hopefully you don't wait till April. I know some people wait exactly. till the deadline and act crazy, but. <laughs> Those are the people I'm working with now because uh, they filed an extension because they're like, oh, I couldn't find half of my stuff, but I'm like, okay. Yeah, but it's yeah, like just take it to the last minute. That all that does is give you added stress you don't need. Yeah, and, it's like uh, have a monthly bookkeeping appointment with exactly. yourself <laughs> at least. Right. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, get with Tanya. Um, and if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button um, and share this with somebody who needs it. See you in the next video, guys.